Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? It's a pretty exciting day because it is iPhone SE day. It is finally coming into people's hands uh, who pre-ordered it, obviously, a week ago. Uh, so I am going to bring you an unboxing, as you can see here, but also uh, some extra stuff to give you some perspective on the phone as I get into my full review process. Now, this unboxing experience is actually kind of special for me, and I'm going to uh, explain why as the unboxing is actually unfolding. But I'm going to go ahead and ruin things right now with a bit of a spoiler alert. The phone's actually not in here anymore. Obviously, I recorded uh, the unboxing already, but the reason why this little reveal is nice is because you're seeing the rear camera in action right now as I am recording this intro and the outro using the iPhone SE at 4K 30 frames per second. So it's a little bit farther away from me. I did my best to get the framing just right, but let me know what you think about the audio quality, the video quality in the comment sections down below. And with all that said, uh, let's go ahead and get into the actual unboxing I did of the iPhone SE 2020 edition iPhone SE 2, in any case, the iPhone SE. All right, so the phone came in uh, a little bit later in the afternoon, and I had to get right to work on it, uh, especially get some pictures over for Pocket Now, start to get some B-roll and whatnot. But of course, it starts off with the unboxing that you're seeing right now. Now, I wanted to put a little bit of extra effort to make sure that this was a good-looking uh, unboxing, mainly because, well, I never really got to do these kinds of unboxings back in the day. Back in the original iPhone days, or the iPhone all the way up to maybe the iPhone 5 and 6, I actually didn't have that kind of experience of using one of these versions versions of the phone on the daily. Of course, I worked at Android Authority, so we only really got the iPhones to drop them or to just use them for comparisons. But now this is an iPhone with the body style of the classic iPhone 8s and before. I literally bought this phone and was able to do so because it is a $399 phone. So this is not a new concept, this iPhone SE price point, but it's great to see it happen now, especially with updated internals that fit for the current landscape of smartphones today. And what you'll find during this unboxing is that it's actually really classic in more ways than one. You, of course, have the plastic that's easy to peel off all over the place. I took my time actually taking off the plastic uh, on the box and also the phone itself uh, with that little flap that's on the bottom. It's something that we're used to with all iPhones at this point. Uh, but once you get underneath those other layers that include some Apple stickers, which admittedly I've never used before, uh, but also some documentation, uh, you can never have too many SIM tools. Once you get underneath that particular layer. Well, there are ear pods in here that connect to the lightning port, obviously, because unlike the earlier iPhones, uh, this one does not have a headphone jack. But the other thing I found interesting is that the plug adapter in here is one of the slower ones. So obviously for $399, you can't really expect to get the fast charging on here, but it is nice that this phone still supports the fast charging. And as long as you're able to get the appropriate chargers and cables for it, you will be able to enjoy that. On top of that, you also get the wireless charging on this phone which will undoubtedly prove pretty useful. And you know what, this product red edition that they usually use uh, for the proceeds to go towards HIV research and whatnot, uh, this time around, the product red proceeds are going to help COVID-19 research and relief. So uh, you're kind of helping things out a little bit by paying for this $399 phone, but just kind of going around the phone, giving you my first impressions on it. Uh, honestly, the first thing that struck me was just how small this screen is and thus the entire body. The screen itself is pretty dang small, especially compared to a lot of the flagships that we're yeah, reviewing lately. This is a very tiny phone at 720p resolution, basically, uh, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be a bad experience. It's just one of those things where if you are used to much larger displays for your media and your gaming, this is going to be a bit of an adjustment. Obviously, I would like more storage. With 64 gigabytes at the base model, I'll probably fill that up really easily with all of the games that I play and also with the 4K60 video recording that I'm probably going to end up doing on this. But in really diving into what a $399 phone means, I had to go for this version and I will share with you what my experience has been so far. Unfortunately, the moment I signed into my iCloud and everything on this Apple device, I got an email already from Apple that said my iCloud storage is full. And no, Apple, I will not be paying for iCloud storage anytime soon. But speaking of what iCloud storage is ultimately for, let's go ahead and get into some of the camera samples. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a bit of a slideshow on this because I want to save a lot of these for my real world, or in this case, the work from home camera test. And I'll do my best to actually get out and about and try to get some dynamic photos so that you can enjoy what the iPhone SE is capable of. And then I will do some comparisons in the future to other phones, um, hopefully around the same price point so you can see where the competition lies. But as far as first impressions on the camera is concerned, I just took some photos around 
my house. It's great to see that Apple put so much thought into ensuring that a single sensor on the back could work for a lot of different scenarios. 4K60 being one of them, you still get the portrait mode, which also works for the front. For now, just enjoy some more photos from the iPhone SE. Tell me what you think about the camera quality in the comments down below, and I will dive more into this camera as I go through my general review process. And then after that, we'll get into the outro. Uh, in any case, look forward to my real-world camera test. It's probably going to be another work-from-home camera test. And a couple of comparisons with this phone. Uh, the main competitor is obviously the Pixel 3a currently, and you're going to see that comparison go up over at Pocket Now. In my case, I'm actually looking to compare this to my iPhone 11 Pro. It might seem like a kind of hard comparison for this phone because it's supposed to be a $400 experience, but I feel like if you've been waiting for the iPhone 11 Pro or you've been holding off on buying it, now the iPhone SE gives you a compelling reason to save a little bit of extra money. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Get into the comment sections. Let me know what you think about the iPhone SE. Did you get one? What has your experience been like? Drop some likes on this video and then subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Until my next video, I'm just going to remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.